sell. When you're optimizing assets for a game, it's very important to have a crystal clear idea of the entire workflow and destination for the asset before you even start to model anything. You have to know, is the asset going to Unreal? Is it going to Unity? Is it for a phone game, console, or even PC? You should also understand what software the team is using. For example, when you are done modeling, is the texture guy going to be working in Blender or is he going to be texturing in Substance Painter? Because where the textures are made matters. Blender's normal maps use OpenGL, but Unreal's normal maps use DirectX. How many polygons do we have to work with? How big can the texture map sizes be? All of these questions should be things you have clear answers to before you do any sort of optimization. That being said, the workflow that we we are going to be using today is Blender to model, Substance Painter to texture, and Unreal as the final destination. Once we have everything in Unreal, I'll be showing you the extra steps that you can do to optimize performance even further. But ironically, the best way to optimize performance for your 3D assets in Unreal 5 is to start optimizing as early as possible from the 3D software in the beginning. So what do we mean by that? Well, if we know that the model is going to be for a game, we don't want to waste any polygons. So what we'll be trying to do is get the best looking quality we possibly can while using the least amount of polygons to do so. But just because the game is low poly does not mean the game has to look low poly because we can get high poly details onto a low poly model, but you have to plan for it ahead of time. So let's say that we're making a photorealistic Tetris game and we need to have the 3D models for all the Tetris pieces. Now, I as the modeler need to look at the concept art and think, okay, how do I break these objects down to the simplest possible shapes using the fewest polygons available? So let's start with this piece here. Clearly, the original art for the Tetris pieces are meant to be a combination of blocks. So when we're doing the high poly version of this piece, we can put all the details that we want, we can bevel the edges, we can give it nice smooth shading, and do all the things that you would normally expect to have in a photorealistic environment. Once we have the high poly version done, the next step is to break it down into as few faces as we possibly can. So once we've done that, we have a high poly version with all the details and the low poly model, which is just bare bones. Once we have these two meshes complete, we just go to the UV map and make sure that everything is laid out optimally. We want the texture map to use as much space as possible so that we're not wasting potential details. And because we know that this model is going to Substance Painter, we want to keep the stretching uniform. So all the dimensions of the map should be properly sized relative to the rest of the model. So if you know the texture artist is working in Substance, do not try to artificially fill up space by stretching parts of your UV, because if you do that, the bigger parts of the map will look stretched when you try and texture it. So once we can confirm that the UVs are clean, we need to confirm that there's only one material, because in game design, less materials on an object, the better performance you'll get from that asset. So I highly recommend if you can put everything on one material, you should. We export the high poly mesh, then we export the low poly mesh. Then in Substance Painter, we want to open the low poly mesh. Now, I recommend you start out with 4K because you can always compress it down later if you want. Your low poly mesh should appear on screen. And now if you go right under the texture settings, down under bake, we can set the bake size to 4K. And on this side, we are going to use our high poly mesh as the target to bake the details onto our low poly model. It'll take a few seconds, but once it's done, return to Substance Painter, bam, look at that. It's a low poly model, but it has all the details and shadow data from the high poly model, which is a great starting point. Now, from this point, you can texture it however you want. I want the pieces to look like photorealistic chunks of painted steel, so that's how I'm going to texture it, but you can make your stuff look however you want. Once you're happy with the texture, we need to export the maps, but instead of doing this the normal way, remember, we are trying to optimize for a game. And in most game engines like Unreal 5, you're going to plug in your texture maps with a material shader. And when you are working with materials, textures turn into image nodes. And image nodes are one of the most expensive nodes that you can use in a material. Most of the time when you're working in photorealism, you're going to get five maps. A color map, a roughness map, a metallic map, an ambient occlusion map, and a normal map. That's five image nodes going into your material. And that's bad because if you want to optimize performance, the fewer image nodes you have, the better. So something that we can do is create an ORM map. You might have noticed that the ambient occlusion, roughness, and metallic maps are all black and white images. And what this means is they can be layered on top of each other. By the way, images normally do this all the time. Every single picture you've ever seen on a computer is just a combination of red, blue, and green pixels. And all an ORM map does is say, okay, ambient occlusion map, you are red pixels. Roughness map, 
you are green pixels. Metallic map, you are blue pixels. And you stack them all on top of each other into a single image, which Unreal can then separate later. And in Substance Painter, you can set things up automatically for you by going to File, Export Settings, Output Templates, hit the plus button to make a new one, name it something like ORM. And then you're going to want an RGB for a color map, an R plus G plus B for the ORM, and another RGB for the normal map. Then you're going to drag the base color into the first RGB, then the ambient occlusion to the R, roughness into the G, and metallic into B. And finally, normal into the last RGB. Awesome. From here, you just make sure you set the file path wherever you want the textures to be exported to, and then pick the new template you just created. Export. Awesome. Now you have three maps, and it's always a good idea to name them properly ahead of time just to clear up any possible confusion later. Now the naming conventions that I usually use are the same ones that a lot of people in Epic recommend for Unreal 5, which means texture files are named T underscore whatever the image is, so this would be T underscore Tetris J piece underscore color, and this would be T underscore Tetris J piece ORM. And this one would be T underscore Tetris J piece normal. Awesome. Now we're going to go to Unreal and import our low poly mesh and all three texture maps. Now when we do this, you'll see a loan material file here. And we want to double click that, open it up, and drag all of our textures into it. And then we'll plug color into base color, R to ambient occlusion, G to roughness, B to metallic, and normal into normal. And look at that, just three textures to get all the data we needed. Now you might have noticed that it's really shiny, like way shinier than it should be. To fix this, we click the ORM map, and on the left scroll down to change it from color to linear color. Then double click the map, and on the right go down to uncheck sRGB. Save, save, and now if we drag our material out into our object, you can see that our object now has the beautiful textures that we got from Substance Painter. And remember, this is all still low poly. It might look nice with all the high poly detail and shadows baked into it, but in reality, it's really still just a few faces. Now, something that we could do to optimize this even further, if we know that the other objects are gonna have similar texture maps, is to use this material as a base for all materials. The maps for all the Tetris pieces are gonna be pretty much exactly the same format. So instead of making separate materials for each piece, if we open the first material, we can right-click the maps and turn them into parameters. So we'll turn color map into a color parameter, the ORM map into an ORM parameter, and the normal map into a normal parameter. And now if we save it, we can right click our original material and create an instance of that material and use that for our mesh instead. And from this point on, anytime we have an object that uses the same kind of texture maps, we can create a duplicate material instance, turn the parameters on, and drag those new textures in like so. So we'll have the same material instance, but with different textures, which we can then apply to our mesh, and we can do this for each mesh until we're done. Now, we're basically almost there, but there's one more big thing that we can do that would really help our performance, and that is to compress the texture sizes from 4K to something a little more normal. And we can do that by shift selecting all the textures, right click, asset selections, and edit selection via property matrix. And on the right under compression, we can limit the size of the textures to whatever we need. This is where you as the developer need to know what the player is expecting to be able to see while playing the game. For example, if these pieces are only ever going to be viewed from far away, we could probably get away with something like 256 by 256. It might look a little bit blurred up close, but from a distance, no one's really gonna be able to tell. We could bump it up to 512 by 512 for a little bit more detail, and that definitely looks a little better, but usually 1024 by 1024 is a healthy balance of performance size and visible detail. And with that, we are basically done. There's still a few things you could do to further optimize it, but as far as general optimization goes, this is a fairly good bar for a game-ready asset. We baked all the high poly detail to an ultra low poly mesh, we stacked the ambient occlusion, roughness, and metallic maps onto a single ORM texture, created a material instance from the original that can be shared across all similar meshes, and compressed the texture sizes to a reasonable 1024 by 1024 and all of it is low poly under the hood. The visuals are all an illusion that's baked in, but the final result isn't half bad. So that's the general workflow to optimize a game-ready asset for Unreal 5. I hope that helps, and as always, hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you around.